Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals here at your service. We are brought to you today by Dingman's Collision Center, along with Cheer Athletics, the nation's number one all-star cheer gym. Glad you've joined us. You won't find another show in the metro area that talks about uh, real estate, construction, business expansion, anything related to the metro becoming uh, more vibrant, more prosperous, and and a great place to work, live, and play. All right, with all that said, time to bring on my co-host, a man who is a legendary real estate deal-making machine and all-around good and well-known fellow, Trenton Magid. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jeff. Well, good morning, Trenton. I've got some very good news for you today. Love it. That good news is the May 2024 construction update video by Brad Williams dropped last night. Uh, So you can see this. Uh, Brad does these videos periodically. They're sponsored by Leader Construction. Uh, It's only seven and a half minutes long, so you can get through it pretty quickly. It'll feel like it's about two minutes long because it's so fun to watch it. But he goes through and he he looks at all these different construction projects around the area and and, uh, shoots some video and explains them, and you got to go watch it. And the way you can see it, go to growomaha.com. Click on Shows, S-H-O-W-S, on the navigation bar, and then there'll be a drop-down of all of our radio shows. At the bottom, it says Construction Update. So, nav bar, Shows, Construction Update. You can enjoy seeing that. It's a lot of fun to watch. It'll save you a lot of gas or electronic vehicle energy, and uh, he explains it. Sometimes there's drones. Sometimes there's uh, videos, and uh, it's, it's, it's a great resource, and you can kind of track what's going on in the metro area. Well, before we get into the news, I do want to give you a little bit of a plug for what's coming up. We're going to be talking about growth and development in Council Bluffs and Potawatomi County. Our guests will be uh, the mayor of Council Bluffs, Matt Walsh, along with Paula Hazelwood. She is the CEO of Advance Southwest Iowa, which is the Economic Development Corporation for Potawatomi County. But before we get into that, let's do our news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. They know mortgage. And if you've checked the calendar recently, you know it's May. And so we're really coming into that prime time home buying season. If you're thinking about entering the fray, one of the first things you want to do is get a hold of Eagle Mortgage. You can call them, you can email them, you can stop by the office at 114th and Davenport, but you want to sit down and meet with them, talk about your situation. They're not a bank. They can shop the market. They can compare and contrast a variety of banks and find the best lending solution for you, the best lender for you, and uh, get yourself a pre-approval letter, then go out and and, and hopefully find your dream home. But uh, they'll coach you and they'll work with you all the way, and uh, we believe in them highly and, and recommend Eagle Mortgage. Okay, Trenton, looking at the news, first up, uh, the Children's Nebraska has uh, held a topping out ceremony this week for the Behavioral Health Wellness Center, new uh, mental health hospital that Children's is constructing on the west side of its campus, right around 85th and Dodge South Side. $110 million, four-story building, and um, this thing is going to be spectacular and desperately needed. That's a big one, and, and the governor was in, Governor Pillen and Mayor Stothard, and they all... It's kind of a tradition where they take the the last beam, the last piece of steel, and a lot of dignitaries and stakeholders sign the beam with well wishes, and uh, they put it up. And then uh, the Omaha Streetcar Authority approved the... A procurement of six actual streetcars themselves. You can't have a streetcar system if you don't have the things that roll on the tracks. And uh, this will be a $41 million purchase. Um, they also approved uh, $6.5 million for spare parts and tools and all the things that you need to, to, to have. The, um, the manufacturer is based in the nation of Spain, España. And um, this is the same company that provided modern streetcars for Kansas City and Cincinnati. And Trent, when you hear stories like this, it's getting closer. It's becoming reality. Do you remember talking about this for the last, you know, we've been on this show for 20 years and we've talked about it for a lot longer than half. Well, I, I, 20 years ago, what we would say to people, Omaha needs uh, some pub, uh, public transit on rail downtown and a grocery store. We're getting one of those. Yep. And rumor has it that the other one might be around the corner as well. Um, addition- but we'll still be on the air, ladies and gentlemen. That's our plan. Additionally, the Streetcar Authority approved procurement of items requiring long lead times, like bridge girders to replace the Harney Street Bridge and the Farnham Street Bridge over I-480. Uh, 
Um, so a lot of that stuff is is really coming along and it and it's getting close. Okay, pickleball courts are coming to Lewis and Clark Landing, one of the three riverfront parks. And uh, this will be an area just north of the Kiwit Luminarium. It's essentially the final piece of the original $300 million uh, riverfront park plan. And uh, Trenton, I know and am confident you'll get out there and play pickleball as soon as it opens. You know it. You can't have enough pickleball courts. I'll take you on. Okay, just just as long as it wasn't like that day when uh, we were in high school and you beat me in like pool and foosball and like ring toss all You got day. me back when you went to college and you were in a fraternity and uh, you had a foosball table. When I came back from New Orleans at Tulane, I didn't stand a chance at foosball anymore. I, pract- I practiced foosball for an entire semester. Did a little bit of studying too, but practiced foosball for an entire semester just so I could beat Trent when he came back from, uh, from for a winter break. Everybody loves knowing that. District 66 plans to demolish the existing Westgate School Building at 78th and Haskell Street and construct a new building. Not shocking news because schools are rehabbed and and rebuilt periodically uh, in the city. But uh, I say this one in particular because while Westgate School was constructed in 1957, it was demolished, destroyed in the famous May 6th, 1975 tornado. Trenton, this is proof that you and I, speaking of how we've known each other since we were kids, are becoming old men because you Absolutely. and I were in kindergarten when that tornado hit, and that was a brand new school. Now it's already being and torn interestingly, down. I, my alma mater, uh, Oakdale, up yep. on Center Street, uh, that's been replaced. Swanson's been replaced. I'm not sure if they've done a couple others, but uh, this is this falls in line with the rest of them. Yeah, it's uh, District 66 really is doing a good job of, of of keeping their elementary schools current and and. And like Prairie Lane, I went to two District 66 elementary schools, one of them Prairie Lane. They, they rebuilt that school not that long ago. And uh, so, yeah, they're doing a good job of, of keeping everything fresh and up to date. Construction at Epley uh, Airfield really coming along nicely. Um, I was, uh, was over there a couple few days ago. And it appears to me that the superstructure that will hold up the glass roof canopy over the pickup drop-off area appears to be all there now. And there's a lot of work still doing on the drive because they're modernizing the drop-off and pickup lanes, adding one. It's going to be a, a lot, lot better. And the other thing is uh, terminal work is full bore ahead. Uh, we've talked uh, a few weeks ago about how they've removed some of the concrete on the north side and the east side of the airport building to get ready for the big expansion. I noticed I, I came through on, what was it, uh, Tuesday night, turned Wednesday morning, a little after midnight. And um, they're like taking stuff already out of the inside of the terminal, even wow. HVAC work. So that thing is full speed ahead, coming along nicely. Kudos to, to everyone down there because they've made the the during the the construction going in the parking garage for drop off and pick up. They, they've made it really smooth. I just I, I think the airport authority does an all around outstanding job. I mean, it, it's just really well. Everything about it is just very well managed. And this construction project so far seems to be very impressive with the way it's just thought through and the way it's uh, being executed so far. Billion dollar project. All right. Finally, uh, progress on the Baby Bob Bridge, which is a bridge to a bridge, if you think about it. But at any rate, it connects the uh, Bob Carey Missouri River Pedestrian Bridge to North Downtown Charles Schwab Field. And um, if you haven't seen it lately, it, it, it's awesome looking project. Brad Williams has done an amazing job uh, taking pictures of that and memorializing it on our Facebook page. Yeah, go take a look at him. He has four pictures that he shot, what, just a couple few days ago, and um, really gives you a good idea. So just go to Facebook and search for Gromha, and uh, you'll see Brad's photos there. They're still saying October for a completion date, but gosh, to me, it seems like it's ahead of schedule for that, but we'll see. It's pretty cool. And that's your news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. We're going to take our first break of the hour, and when we come back, we're going to bring on uh, Council Bluffs Mayor Matt Walsh, along with Paula Hazelwood, CEO 
CEO of Advance Southwest Iowa, going to talk about growth and development in Council Bluffs and Pottawatomie County. You're listening to Jeff Beals and Trenton Magid on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And Grow Omaha back on the air. Jeff Beals and Trenton Magid at your service were brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center along with Cheer Athletics. Cheer Athletics is the nation's number one all-star cheer gym. All-star is a type of competitive cheer and uh, generally is considered kind of the best for the all-around experience for the young athletes. Um, but the uh, Omaha location of uh, cheer athletics is located in Papillion, uh, just southwest of Highways 50 and 370. Trenton and I know the owners personally, um, outstanding people who are very committed uh, to developing kids, giving them a great experience, learning them communication, leadership skills, competition. Uh, uh, these kids that participate in chair athletics uh, have amazing levels of fitness, and we highly recommend it. If you're interested, just go to caomaha.com, C-A as in chair athletics, caomaha.com, and uh, you can get yourself started. Well, we have with us uh, Matt Walsh, mayor of Council Bluffs, and Paula Hazelwood, who is the CEO of Advance Southwest Iowa, the Economic Development Corporation in Pottawatomie County. Mayor and uh, Paula, welcome to the show. Morning. Morning. Good to have you both with us. And um, I guess I, I like to start these uh, conversations out with a big, broad question, and that is the 30,000 foot view of um, the state of growth and development in, in Council Bluffs. And since we'll start specifically with Council Bluffs, we'll have the mayor first, and then, then Paula, we'll have you kind of talk countywide. But, Mayor, your 30,000 foot view of the state of growth and development in Council Bluffs. You know, I think things are going really well right now. We've got a lot of uh, um, activity, but uh, I, the state of Iowa in and of itself needs to figure out their tax structure. Um, Nebraska is going through the same thing. With property taxes, uh, especially on commercial buildings, are high. It's a long story that goes back to 1031 tax exchanges and, and investors putting money in agricultural ground and Farm Bureau complaining and and it just snowballed and, and, and somebody's got to get a hold of it and figure it out. We have worked really well on our income tax structure and I think we're very competitive for commercial income taxes. So as a practitioner of commercial real estate in, in Iowa and particularly Council Bluffs, I have noticed that the, the, the real estate taxes can be a lot higher in Council Bluffs than, than in, in Omaha. However, didn't they do something about five, ten years ago on apartments where they, they transitioned them? So they were considering apartments to be commercial buildings, and, and um, <clears throat> you really got to go back to the story of why it got so high, but um, they uncoupled apartments from commercial and put it at the uh, residential rate, and that reduced. What they do is they roll back the percent valuation of your property that's taxable. Currently, it's about 46%. So if you- So they did it over like 10 year period. Yeah, and it's fully implemented now. And so, and actually I, I dealt with an apartment developer on a TIF question and I said, I don't, I don't think we need to subsidize the TIF level we had previously because um, now uh, residential apartment complexes have been re reduced down in their taxable value, but so I, I did the analysis for him, and there's an intangible in there, and that's how the assessor treats the valuation. And I think the Douglas County assessor is a little softer on valuation than the Pottawatomie County assessor. And, and how do you balance that out? Because, as you know, appraisal's uh, not a science, it's an art. And yeah, and, and from, from a commercial real estate standpoint, that's certainly a consideration, whether it's base rent taxes insurance when when they're writing a check to the landlord um that's certainly a consideration and in, in order to retain tenants we, we've got to keep those operating expenses lower but I, I, especially when you break them out and you say here's here's your lease but here's your cam charge and that cam charge jumps out like a sword though. yeah especially taxes uh, paula let's uh, talk a little bit about the um, uh, economic conditions and and uh, the state of growth and development in potawatomi county in general so this is my eighth year. This is my eighth year as the uh, CEO for Advanced Southwest Iowa Corporation. 
And I've consistently been pleased with the development and the growth that we've experienced. When I first accepted this job, we really only covered Council Bluffs. It was just me, one employee. Um, but in 2018, we were asked by the county to ta- actually take over the economic development for the full county. And so I have an employee that covers the rural communities out there. But we have consistently stayed busy. And um, even when COVID hit, we had about 50 projects in our active pipeline. Um, we track everything, as you can imagine, as economic developers. And I kept kind of waiting for it to, to level out or even decline a little bit. And it never really did. We got even busier during COVID, the three years that people were really working, you know, from home. We got even busier. And the projects that we had in our pipeline, we didn't have one of them that fell off. I mean, and some of them we are actually still working on. So we're diverse and we've got a good um, mix of industry verticals, which I'm super happy about. And, and, you know, partially our projects are coming to us differently these days. So we um, work with a lot of site selection consultants, as you can imagine. But we have gotten more and more uh, leads directly from our real estate community, which we appreciate, but then also the end user directly. So the the tides have changed somewhat in economic development from when I first started. So, Paul, your primary responsibility, your focus is on Pottawatomie County and Council Bluffs. But you're part of uh, Select Greater Omaha and you're part of the Omaha chamber affiliation as well. Explain how that works and what makes our metropolitan area unique when it comes to economic development. Um, correct. So we are part of the Greater Omaha Economic De- Economic Development Partnership um, and have been since 2013, which is a two-state, eight-county regional economic development initiative. And so we primarily, Advanced Southwest Iowa Corporation, primarily focuses just on Pottawatomie County. Um, but we interact with all of our partners within the organization. And really, you know, we focus not only on new to market projects, but also obviously growing our existing business base here. And so, you know, when we have projects come in um, to the Omaha Chamber, it, it's, a, it's kind of a mixed bag because some companies only want to be in Nebraska. Other companies are open, obviously, to be in uh, for Iowa and Nebraska to be considered. So, it just depends on the project, how we interact with our other partners, specifically the Omaha Chamber, but we collaborate on a day-to-day basis. And, and, a, and so, a win for Iowa is a win for Nebraska. A, absolutely. The mayor and I were just talking about that on the ride over. I mean, it's, we are a region for a purpose. We share workforce. The commutes are very, very easy. Um, we have a lot of amenities, you know, that are available in Omaha and Counts Bluffs and some of our rural communities, partner communities. And so we want to celebrate all of those jointly and obviously be able to, you know, talk openly about, um, you know, what's in each area. But yes, that's absolutely correct. What are, what are some of the uh, economic development announcements that have uh, occurred? Just a couple of them in Pottawatomie County over the last couple of years yeah. that, that stand out to you. I would say one of the biggest ones that we worked on, and I believe we started work, working with them in 2020, late 2020, maybe early 2021, um, but Ice Cap Cold Storage Facility was one of them. And they, we started working with them, and as you know, kind of that warehouse distribution verticals changed a little bit during COVID. Still seeing, you know, a little bit of uh, various trends with that, but... IceCap actually came in, started working with us and with the city. And, you know, I always like to preface every project that I work on, specifically in Council Bluffs, the city staff, the mayor and his team are are obviously involved with. Um, But we started working with them. Um, We had a couple of challenges to overcome, but they ended up buying um, a real serve site um, in Council Bluffs for uh, a two-phase project. And so they, um, they began their construction. Phase one was completed. And then very rapidly, it wasn't planned that quickly, but very rapidly, then they launched into phase two, and that construction is just being cleaned or finished right now. And what's now. the location of that, South 24th Street? or? Uh, no, they are actually off of 16th Avenue over okay. there. So kind of where the uh, Union, Union Pacific Railroad uh, Yard is, kind of over in that area off of like 23rd. I, w- I was impressed. Another project was the Opus Buildings, right? Uh, Interstate 80, I-29, Mayor. Um, a couple of big warehouses that were at least right away. Um, yeah, I, I think coming out of COVID when uh, businesses were adlers, adversely affected, um, they were so used to just-in-time inventory ordering, having it on site, uh, 
couple days after they ordered it. And when that couldn't happen coming out of COVID, then there was a reaction in the market to, to start building warehousing and strategic areas that, uh, um, and our advantage is that we are on interstate 80 and 29. And so you can go east, west, north, south, uh, out of council bluffs. That seems to have softened a little lately, but for a while we had lots of logistic companies. All right, we're talking with the uh, mayor of Council Bluffs, Matt Walsh, and Paula Hazelwood, uh, CEO of Advanced Southwest Iowa Economic Development Corporation. We're going to take our middle of the show break for the news, but when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, housing projects in the Council Bluffs, uh, future growth plans, and maybe even streetcar uh, crossing the river and going into Council Bluffs. A lot more to come. Uh, You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center on News Radio. 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beal sitting next to Trent and Maggot. We're brought to you by Cheer Athletics as well as Dingman's Collision Center. Four metro area locations for Dingman's, by the way. 120th and Maple, Downtown Papillion, Saddle Creek Road, Midtown, and 144th and L. More to come. It's time for our, which we're excited to hear details about that. It's time for our commercial real estate development spotlight of the week, which is brought to you by Noddle Companies. Uh, they are you know, perhaps the most famous real estate developer in town. You know, they do a lot of projects nationwide, but here in Omaha, Exarban Village, uh, River's Edge and Council Bluffs, Village Point Medical uh, Center in West O, and uh, so many other projects. They've done a lot of headquarters buildings like Valmont, HDR, and countless others. Um, and then Exarban Village, uh, you know, is probably 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 their most famous. But we have some news coming out of the Builders District, which is the Noddle Company's project just a little bit west of Charles Schwab Field in North Downtown. The Urban Land Institute Kansas City chapter is going to do a tour and showcase event on May 21st for the brand new four story office building that Noddle Companies did in the Builders District. The address is 1501 Mike Fahey Street. And this is Nebraska's first cross-laminated timber building. Translated into English, that means there's actually wood supports in there instead of just all metal and concrete. And you can see those vertical, beautiful vertical wood supports when you're walking through the building. Also in the Builders District, which is that area, like I said, north of 480, uh, west of Charles Schwab Field, uh, the the Saul's Jewelry and Loan buildings have been vacated. Saul's has moved to 22nd and Harney, and plans are in the works to redevelop all that area as part of the Builders District. That's coming along. It's very early, um, but eventually you'll see those old vacated Saul's buildings in North Downtown. That means coming down to the ground. <laughs> And that's your Noddle Company's Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight of the Week. Thank you to Noddle Companies for sponsoring us. And you can learn more about all that they do at noddlecompanies.com. We have with us the mayor of Council Bluffs, Matt Walsh, and Paula Hazelwood, CEO of Advance Southwest Iowa. And uh, Mayor Walsh, I kind of want to talk a little bit about city housing projects that that are underway uh, in Council Bluffs. Yeah, we, um, like everywhere across the country, post-2008 real estate crash we, we had an active builders market prior to that and, and a lot of people left the business and and uh, while we have people building homes in council bluffs not to the extent that they were and and unfortunately at this point where we think we have about one percent uh, vacancy in rental property which is good for people that want to build multifamily. Um, they fill up quick uh they're successful for people. The interest rate's a little higher, but I don't think you ever get a market where you can be 100% occupied in, in a matter of months after opening your doors. But um, we also have a dearth of owner-occupied, and so we need builders to build. Um, I was surprised the other day. I got a call from one of the local media stations that said that uh, – uh, after the Census Bureau, that the population of Council Bluffs had gone down 341 people. And and I know, you know, they did the census during COVID, and so they did the mail out. But I know people that were hired that were going to work uh, the census, doing the, the boots on the ground, door knocking to follow up on those who didn't respond. And the response rate's usually about uh, 55, 60 percent to the first mailing. And 
And so I went to research, and, and the Census Bureau reports 99.9% of the people return their uh, mailed out <laughs> requests. And I went, wow, you, you got to be a little more creative with your. 37% of the statistics are made up. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was 38. Yeah, it could be 38. Yeah, by the way, not not to go off on a tangent with that, but I saw that report as well. And um, I, I it, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, the, the Census Bureau even said the city of Gretna had to decline in population. It's the fastest growing city in the state of Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was and, asinine. And, and it's important stuff because that's where funding. federally funding and state funding get allocated based on population. You know, when you buy gas at the gas pump, the state collects it and then reallocates it back out to communities based on their population. Yeah, population. So if you've got less population, you get less money. It, it, it's a bad well, scenario. Mayor, let's talk a little bit about the streetcar. Uh, Trent and I have been talking about the, the streetcar a lot because we're so excited about what it's going to do for um, – Pop repopulation of urban centers and commercial real estate and residential real estate development. What what do you think about? We've we've heard about these um, th- these plans to extend it into Council Bluffs. Trent, personally, Trent and I love the idea. Where are we at with that, and what's the feasibility long term? So, um, as you alluded to earlier, it's been a conversation that's gone on for a decade, if not decades, and and we've been on trips. To look at other communities that have put in streetcar, uh, Salt Lake, Pittsburgh, Dallas, Kansas City, um, and without exception, we just got back from North Carolina, without exception, it's like watering the desert. Residential housing grows because developers can give their clients an amenity they can't get anywhere else. And, and then those ancillary businesses that serve dense populated areas, bars, restaurants, dry cleaners, pop up along the streetcar line. I think people misinterpret that it's primarily a, a human transportation vehicle. It's an economic development vehicle um, that secondary provides easy, convenient transportation to their surrounding neighborhoods. And, and Council Bluffs has a unique advantage, we think, in that when our founding fathers platted the ground, they were real creative. Everything north was A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Everything south was one, two, three, four, five. Well, First Avenue, the first block off of Broadway, served an industrial area that no longer exists with rail. And so it was a rail line, never developed as a street, um, the ra- there's no longer industrial there, so the railroads abandoned it, removed the tracks, and we have a 66-foot wide clear span, um, so we don't have to tear up streets, put in new infrastructure. People put in new infrastructure because they worry that uh, after the streetcar starts running, they're going to have to tear it up to fix something, so they want to put in everything new. It's, it's expensive, and, and we can do it without the expense the one unusual expense, how do we get across the river? And so where we are now is we're doing a Pell study, uh, planning environmental linkages. It's the first step in recognizing whether or not we qualify for federal funding. And uh, Council Bluffs uh, is, does not have as many affluent um, residents as, as Omaha does. And so we will heavily rely on federal funding if we can do it. And and it's not a given. We're studying it. We think we can do it. We have a plan. We put in a, a bike trail along that uh, clear span that, if you look at it at the busy intersections, easily doubles a streetcar station stops. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a ways away. It's years But it's away. worth the discussion. It's definitely worth the discussion. If I laughed. Somebody wrote a letter to the editor the other day and said, Council Bluffs never changes anything. They, they're still waiting for General Dodge to come back, and now they want to put a streetcar in. And I'm going, wait a minute. <laughs> Aren't those contradictory terms? No, I'd be, I'd be pretty impressed if uh, General Dodge came back, and so would the Dodge family, if I, <laughs> if I could speak on their behalf. Um, we got one minute left, Paula. Um, I want you to kind of maybe finish up with where we're going with future development in the Council Bluffs area and all of Pottawatomie County. Well, we do have a lot going on, certainly. Um, 
uh, we did recently completed a, a city county joint land use study, which really gives us a roadmap. But the city is also has added on top of that a sewer study, sanitary sewer study. So marking, you know, different paths for growth. I mean, obviously, you know, being a river community, we only have a few areas that we can grow in. So um, certainly looking at those areas and um, I do believe we'll continue to chart the path for economic development in the future, but a lot of really interesting and, and fun things going on right now, not only for economic development, but quality of life pieces, obviously, as the mayor talked about housing, all of that jointly goes together to be a good economic development community and region. So, Keep up the good work, you two, and I know you have teams behind you, but you've, uh, you've been dedicated. You've been mayor since 2011, correct? Yeah. 2013. 2000, 2013. Okay, 11 years. That's right. And uh, but you've been involved with the city council since what 96? Uh, yeah. So this is my 29th year in elected office. All right. Well, uh, we greatly appreciate both of you joining us, Mayor Matt uh, Walsh, of Council Bluffs, and Paula Hazelwood of Advanced Southwest Iowa. Appreciate you bringing us up to date. We'll do it again in the future. Awesome. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah. Thank you. All right, our pleasure. Going to take our final break of the hour, and when we come back, it'll be time for the Perkins Kreitzer construction lightning round. I'm looking at the list. A lot on there. It'll be hard to get through all of it. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Magid here. It is time for your Perkins Kreitzer construction lightning round, in which we talk about a lot of things in a short period of time. Thanks to Perkins Kreitzer Construction for making this possible. Last week, we told you uh, that they were uh, working on some Jersey Mike's locations. Well, they just opened a Jersey Mike's um, in Metro Crossing in Council Bluffs. Metro Crossing is that huge retail development that is uh, southwest of the I-29, I-80 interchange. I guess the eastern of the two I-80, I-29 interchanges there. And that Jersey Mike's is just one of many uh, projects that PC Construction does. Um, they do uh, big, big projects like renovating the Miracle Hills Park Shopping Center on the west side of 114th. And they do restaurants like the aforementioned Jersey Mike's. And uh, if you're thinking about doing a construction project, you want to work with Perkins Kreitzer Construction. Uh, Dave Kreitzer and his team there do a great job, and we appreciate them making the lightning round possible. Well, Ghost Donkey and Shampong Lanes, two concepts from Omaha-based flagship restaurant group, are coming to the brick line at the Mercantile Building near 10th and Harney Street, opening getting really close. I want to congratulate Inkwell. That's a very cool cocktail bar in Countryside Village. Uh, they appear to be opening a location in Chicago, in Chicago's Fulton Market neighborhood. Stories Coffee plans to open a standalone drive through location in the Blend Food Hall, the former Blend Food Hall it is, 107th and Q. That was a short-lived drive through only place that had a bunch of different restaurant concepts into it. Stories is taking it over, opening as planned for early July, depending on weather and permitting. You have Little King Deli and Subs plans to open this spring really soon. It's getting quite close. Near 100, it's southwest of 144th and Dodge in the Hartwood Preserve area. This is right in front of the recently relocated Mahogany Prime Steakhouse, if you can picture that, and kind of that west of Boys Town area. Little King's already uh, currently has six Omaha locations. It's fun to see its resurgence. It is. It reminds me of uh, reminds me of being a kid going to Little King. So they're at number eleven, Royal Treat. Amen. A uh, foreign taste, a foreign taste, which is a fine dining restaurant uh, at one hundred forty second and Fort Street. Plans to transition to an events-only venue starting June 2nd. To kick things off, the restaurant will host its first pop-up event with James Beard-nominated chef Clayton Chapman on May 31st and June 1st. It's going to be a six-course culinary event. Table Coffee, Table Coffee Company moved a couple doors to the west in the old market. They're now in the former Stokes Southwestern Restaurant Space at 1122 Howard Street. Uh, they previously were a couple doors to the east. And um, Red Lobster suddenly closed dozens of locations nationwide, including the Council Bluffs location at 3040 Dial Drive. Tastes are changing. Have you noticed? There's some national articles about that. And they, they're, they've had struggles, but they've done this all-you-can-eat shrimp or 
or lobster, whatever they do, and they they underestimate it that their customers come in there and they they lose money on those campaigns. Uh, those chain restaurants of all uh, stripes and variety and sizes are typically struggling these days. The Folding Warehouse, a mashup between football and bowling, is nearing completion of construction uh, two blocks north of 90th and Fort. It's in a 50,000 square foot space, 30 lanes of foaling. You literally throw a football at the pins instead of rolling a bowling ball. Who has to set them back up? That's what I want to know. Glad it's not you and me. Two full bars and a dedicated meeting space. Um, This is a really, really cool thing, getting very close to opening the Folding Warehouse. House. When it actually does open, uh, we will keep you up to date on that. Crumble Cookies opened yesterday at 10407 South 15th Street in Bellevue. People love those gourmet cookies. The third one, at least. Yeah, I know there's one in uh, 168th and Center, Maple. Maple. I believe there's one in Papillion as well that we reported okay, on, so if I remember correctly. Four. Yeah, they're, they're, really, uh, they're really spreading around pretty fast. An event center at 1002 Dodge, so the northwest corner of 10th and Dodge Street downtown, is finding new life as Capital Arcade. This is going to be a uh, kind of like an upper scale bar arcade concept, kind of an arcade for grownups, if you will. It's from the same people that own the Fat Putter, which is a very popular indoor golf uh, and lounge entertainment thing at 10th and Capitol downtown. Uh, This new Capitol Arcade is going to be 8,000 square feet, and it's scheduled to open in July. Who would have thought? People are going to love that place. Yeah, that guy's doing really well. Uh, And that guy uh, is uh, Tim Tim Worley, if if I remember correctly. He also has a prehistoric putt, uh, which is, uh, in September, going to open in the former Nobby's location in Bel Air Plaza. Which will have a, is it a Moots Pizza? Is that who's going in there? I'm not sure about that. Or is that? uh, Uh, The other one. There's one in. Not Moots. um, Yeah, I don't. um, Izzy's? I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll get back to you on that. But pizza and indoor golf sounds sounds pretty good. I think everyone would would, would love that. Um, Backline Comedy Club at uh, 16th and Harney Street in the he, the historic Keyline Building is seeking approval for a sidewalk patio. Uh, since acquiring the building, Shamrock Development has made a lot of updates, and now a sidewalk patio going in. That's a cool place. Music's playing. We are done. Hope everyone has a great week. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, Chair Athletics, and Perkins Kreitzer Construction. We'll chat with you next week at 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.